So this is a snippet that's going to be going over some common musculoskeletal disorders, um, rheumatoid arthritis, OA, and gout, really focusing on you know what they um, have that are different from each other. And these are three very common ones that you'll see in practice fairly often. A lot of people get them mixed up, so we're going to try to break these down so that they um, are less confusing and we can understand and see the differences between them. So first we have to break them down, um, but understand like what each of them is. So OA or osteoarthritis is a bone problem. It is a bone on bone, bone rubbing against bone arthritis. Um, and it's all again about the bone. And so it's important to understand that because when we look at, you know, how um, this person's affected, um, when they hurt, where they hurt, um, diagnostic testing, treatment, all of that, it makes sense because it's about the bone. Uh, rheumatoid arthritis, on the other hand, it's a immune arthritis. Um, so it's an autoimmune condition, actually. It affects the whole body, um, but it's an inflammatory process of the joint. So it's not about the bones. It's about the joint area being inflamed. Um, so uh, while it, these are all happening at the location of bone, um, you know, rheumatoid arthritis is not coming from a bone problem. It's coming from a body problem, an immune problem. Um, and last but not least, there's gout, um, which is a um, collection of uric acid crystals. So this isn't even a bone problem. You're collecting uric acid crystals not because they're really cool, because you have a kidney problem. So your kidneys are either not excreting enough uric acid or you're making too much, taking in too much from your diet, whatever it might be. Um, but you are collecting these extra because what your body does, if it can't get rid of something, it literally starts collecting it and then trying to push it out through your skin. So we'll talk more about this, but effectively, you know, um, gout is just a collection of these uric acid crystals that you have too much of um, uh, in your joints. So let's start talking about some of the major differences between these. So one of the big things you're going to see difference between them is the joints that are affected. So when we're talking about osteoarthritis, remember the bone problem. This is a bone problem, and it's a problem because there's usually too much pressure or weight um, on the joints that are affected. So usually these are going to be weight bearing joints. These are people are going to have, um, osteoarthritis in their hip and their knee. And the thing is, is it's not going to be on both sides. It's going to be usually on one side. It's asymmetrical. Um, another thing we might notice is they may have what are known as Bouchard's or, um, Herbden's nodes. Um, and these are, um, kind of little, um, nodes that are in the joints of the, um, fingers and um, that grows. So these are the kind of um, characteristic signs and symptoms you're going to see of OA. It's all about the weight bearing joints um, and usually just on one side. On the other hand, RA, um, rheumatoid arthritis, this immune problem, um, usually it's small joints that are affected first. It's not, remember, it's not a bone problem, it's an immune problem. Um, and usually it's on both sides. This is a system, systemic condition. A lot of times they'll even have systemic symptoms, which we'll talk about here in a minute. Um, you're also going to notice, notice deformities, one's known as ulnar drift. There's also boutonniere's deformity and swan neck deformity. So and you can see all of these in this picture below here. Um, so the ulnar drift is kind of how all, the whole hand is um, drifted out um, uh, towards the um, ulnar nerve. Um, boutonniere's deformity, um, that's going to be the, um, you can see it like in this picture, it's in the thumb. It's kind of like that weird like flexion of the thumb, um, whereas swan neck deformity is kind of, you can see how like the fingers um, are look actually like a swan's neck. Like if you look at them, if you look at them from the side, they actually look like a swan's neck. But you see one of the big difference here, you know, OA has nodes, RA has deformities. So that's if you just even want to look at it like a bigger picture thing. Um, the joints are going to be affected um, in a different way. Usually these smaller joints um, on this, uh, it's going to be equal on the same, uh, both sides, and I'm going to have a lot more of those deformities, especially of the hands. Um, last but not least, again, is gout. Um, usually gout's going to be, it can be found in the hands, the toes, the ears, like pretty much any joint you can have gout in. Um, but usually it's going to be the hands or the feet, and most commonly it's going to be in the great toe, so that your big toe is the most common place for gout. Um, 
Unlike, you know, OA and RA where you can have lots of joints affected, usually gout, there's less than four joints affected. Um, it's asymmetrical, so you can see kind of like in this picture, it's not um, equal on both sides. Um, and they have what's called tophi, which are kind of these um, d uh, deposits of cr crystals. Um, and the other thing that you'll notice that's different is, you know, um, these crystals, they seem to come in all different shapes and sizes. And they actually, um, when you look at it through the skin, it almost looks like a whitish color to it. Um, compared to some of the um, redness and stuff that you're seeing in um, some of these other problems like OA and RA. So let's talk about when they hurt. So this is going to be another differentiation between um, each of these disorders. So in OA, um, they hurt more with activity. So people that have osteoarthritis, it's all about those weight-bearing joints. So a lot of times this person's pain is going to get worse as the day goes on, um, the more that they're uh, moving and using it. Um, so especially, you know, someone who has like um, arthritis in their back, you know, from, uh, you know, being up and moving around a lot. Um, the, uh, the other thing is too, a lot of people with osteoarthritis will complain, like they'll say like, oh, I know it's about to rain because my hip or my knee is hurting. And that's because, you know, changes in the barometric pressure actually affects their joints. So they also hurt more when there is, um, abnormal weather patterns. Um, people with OA also can get stiff. Um, and usually it's from being in the same place. So this person's going to complain a lot in the morning when they first wake up for about the first 30 minutes or so that they're really stiff. Uh, but it usually goes away. Um, and that's one of the ways that we usually tell that it's different from RA and other things is that that stiffness in the morning will go away. Um, OA, they may also have crepitation, which is the bone on bone. It literally sounds like, um, what kind of, I want to say it's like nails on a chalkboard, but it's like, um, it's like that grating crunching sound that you hear of bone rubbing on bone. Um, for people with RA, um, they also get morning stiffness, but usually it does not go away. So usually we tell them to get in the warm shower in the morning, kind of loosen up those joints um, to help prevent some of that morning stiffness or may, uh, improve that morning stiffness. Um, and this person with RA, they're going to have exacerbations um, and other systemic symptoms like anorexia, loss of appetite, generalized fatigue, weakness, that kind of stuff as well. Um, and so, and their symptoms are, uh, may come and go like with their exacerbations. Um, they may have some pain on a regular basis, but as a whole, like, you know, some of the other systemic symptoms and stuff like that, they may see those kind of come and go as they have an attack. And the thing about RA2 is they can have systemic symptoms. They can have symptoms in every organ of their body. Um, so we're at OA, it's more just about the bone again, um, all about, you know, that bone pain. Um, you know, RA is more just about this stiffness, this inflammation, um, these attacks that are happening. And so similarly, gout also has attacks, um, except gout, like in between, there's no symptoms. Like, you know, if someone has gout, they only know they have gout when they're having an attack. Um, and people get gout after like stress, like if they had some trauma, if they're drinking too much alcohol, um, eating too much high purine foods, things like that. Um, it's going to kind of precipitate those attacks. You know, people with RA, they don't know what causes their attacks necessarily. Um, they could be more predisposed when they're sick, but you know, with gout, it's a little bit more predictable where it's like, hey, you know, if I eat too much of this, then I am going to have a gout attack. Where RA, it's autoimmune, so we don't really understand, you know, why their body is attacking itself um, or when it's going to attack itself, but it does. So let's look at some diagnostics. Uh, this is also going to show us some differences. Um, with OA, it's a bone problem. So we're going to look at, um, you know, diagnosis that involve the bone. So a bone scan, CT, MRI, x-ray. Um, and one thing we're going to notice on those x-rays are going to be what are called osteophytes. They're these little projections of the bone from the bone rubbing on the bone. Um, so those will be present on someone who had osteoarthritis. Um, one thing to note that's going to be normal in a patient with OA is their inflammatory markers. So a patient in OA is not going to have signs of inflammation usually. So no elevated ESR, no elevated CRP. And if we did a um, aspiration of their synovial fluid, that um, fluid that's in their joint, it would be clear because there's no inflammation. Um, so that's so kind of sometimes when we look at diagnosis, we have to look at what's normal, not just what is abnormal. 
Um, so on the opposite end with RA, there's no osteophytes. This is not a bone problem. This is an immune problem, an inflammation. So we are going to look for signs of inflammation. So they're going to be the complete opposite. They're going to have an increased ESR, which is the erythrocyte sedimentation rate, which is just a sign of inflammation. Increased CRP or C-reactive protein, another sign of inflammation. They're also, if we did a synovial fluid analysis, it would come back straw colored because they are having an active inflammation. Um, there's also going to be signs of autoimmune problems. So we're going to have some of these weird labs. So their um, ANA may be elevated. They could have an elevated rheumatoid factor or RF um, and also an elevated anti-CCP. And all these weird labs, pretty much they're just telling us the body is attacking itself. Um, for gout, uh, they could have an increased uric acid. You know, the, your book talks about how you know, a lot of times their labs are going to be normal. Um, we can do a 24-hour urine and see um, if they're having trouble getting rid of the uric acid. Um, there's that. Um, but really the golden standard um, per your book is the synovial fluid analysis. And of course, what are we going to find there? We're going to find these crystals, these uric acid crystals. Last but not least, um, some of the treatments that are gonna, they're gonna look a little bit different. You'll see some of these are actually very similar. So let's look and try to like break these down and see what's different. So with OA, it's a bone problem. And really their big problem is that they have pain. So um, a big part of it's gonna be pain management. We're gonna help them with some activity and lifestyle modifications. Um, and when it comes down to it, what they really need is a joint replacement. It's a bone problem. Um, RA, of course, pain medications. Um, they may also have anti-inflammatories in general to decrease that inflam inflammation process. Um, again, activity lifestyle modifications, but they're going to have different drugs. They're going to have what are called DMARGs, which are disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs, um, and then also immunosuppressing drugs and steroids. And, you know, all of these are going to help to, um, you know, kind of depress that over response that the body's having. The body's attacking itself and we're trying to get the body to stop attacking itself. So we are suppressing that immune response and trying to get the body from stop reacting, uh, from stop, stopping reacting so much to um, uh, this disease process. Um, and you know what medications they're gonna be on is just gonna depend on how sick they are. So um, we kind of do like a stepwise approach where we're trying to start with the least invasive first and then step up. Um, and then for gout, they take a couple medications for acute attacks, you do colchicine. Um, and then for maintenance, they're on allopurinol. And these are going to help to regulate that uric acid. Um, we usually diet changes to stay away from high purine foods and then increasing their fluid intake so that they're um, flushing out their kidneys a little better and getting uh, rid of that uric acid. So this was just my little snippet just to kind of introduce you to these three disorders and some of the differences between them. They are fairly confusing, but don't worry. The more you look at them, kind of talk about them, we'll do some um, good things in class, you know, to kind of break them down and uh, differentiate them. Um, but hope you all are doing well.